Thank you for tuning in. Let's continue with this conversation. Focusing on how to keep our leaders accountable. How to fight this monster of corruption and impunity. I call it the twin monster because this is two sides of a coin. Corruption and impunity is thriving in our country because we have not been holding our leaders to account. Thanks again to Gen Z. They have brought the issue of accountability to the fore. That is why you have seen just a list of demands from the Gen Z. Dr. William Ruto writes a memorandum saying, I will not sign this bill. I want the concerns of the people taken care of. Initially, he removed a few things while returning through the back door more punitive measures. But when Gen Z caught up with him, he has all but abandoned the bill. We are waiting for the formal process. He's also written a memo to his government on austerity measures because now 368 billion will no longer be milked from the already overburdened Kenyans. That is called accountability. And it's the collective voice of the Gen Z that has brought that accountability. Where our institutions, parliament, had failed, where we as the opposition had failed, because we started a journey to accountability last year with Azimio-led demonstrations. We were called to the table, and being to call to the table has two or three risks. It has the risk of deceit, being deceived, the risk of being co-opted, the risk of being compromised. The jury is out there because those talks that took the whole of last year did not yield anything for the population. The issue was the cost of living. We didn't get it. Parliament, too, has dropped the ball because that issue, instead of being foremost in their lips, they already had approved the Finance Bill 2023, which was not only going to force more Kenyans into poverty and loss of jobs, it was also going to spike the cost of living. So we are not doing well in accountability, but right now the Gen Z have restored accountability. How do we take it up from here? How do we keep the ruling elite on their toes permanently? It is possible. Now that we have regained our voice, our agency, it is possible for the Gen Z in each county, for all the people of goodwill to form around accountability groups, to put a spotlight, even if it's not a formal group, it's a group of Gen Z which you can't put a hand on because formal groups tend again to fall to either intimidation or co-option or compromise. It's a time to ask ourselves, how can we keep this spotlight of accountability in every county and on every leader? Look at how Senate made beautiful contributions and are continuing to make beautiful contributions. Where were those voices before? A few of them have been talking and have been holding the government to account, but a majority now picking up the chorus. It is because they've been awakened by the Gen Z protests. If they do not believe it in their heart, they are afraid of being confronted and asked questions. 
confrontation does not mean violence. It just means raising voices and saying well, no to the things we don't want collectively. Highlighting the things we don't want, being public about it like the Gen Z have done through the Mitandao, and do whatever means each group finds um, available for highlighting publicly those issues. A few weeks ago, who would have believed that just through social media, we could get to the level of accountability where we are? My plea, please let us not drop the ball. And can we also have a spotlight on all the offices that help governance? On the ESCC, by highlighting several of the cases they are handling. On the prosecutor's office, office of the director of public prosecutions, you remember what Dr. Ruto did or his regime did after they came to power? The first step was to withdraw or rather compromise the case against his deputy, Rashagwa, returning 200 million which had already been confiscated by the court and compromising public interest in a case where he was claiming one, uh, uh, land worth 1.5 billion near the airport, compromising that case, getting officers from land's office to swear that the land belongs to Gashabu. So not only gifting him 200 million, which had been obtained from 18, a total of 18 counties uh, around Kenya, through fraudulent dealings in tenders, that was the accusation, and Rashegu had been unable to explain to the court, so the money had been confiscated. So when I'm saying this, I am echoing the court's words, and I would be able to substantiate anywhere. Withdrawing that and gifting him the public land, it signaled a field day for corrupt practices, and that was not all. Many, many other cases involving key parastatals, people who were in court for fraud, have been compromised, either by not calling evidence or by the director of public prosecutions withdrawing. He can't withdraw cases without the permission of the court, but the court gave in in all those cases. But last week, I have seen a court of law refuse to allow the director of public prosecutions withdraw a fraud case against the deputy governor and his wife. So through Gen Z protests, even our courts seem to be regaining their public spiritedness. But I want to salute the courts, especially the high court, sections of the high court, that has consistently stood with the people. And I want to call upon our judiciary to be accountable and the people to put a spotlight on every public office, be it the courts, be it ESCC, be it Office of Member of Parliament, Office of MCA, Office of Governor, be it the office of the DPP, because even the appointed, not elected offices need to be accountable. Our police force, our policemen, Kenyans, we have a duty to keep these people accountable. That way we'll be building a better Kenya. We have a constitutional framework, Chapter 6, Article 10, Article 1 on sovereignty. Sovereign power belongs to us. We've been woken up. Can we sustain this and make a nation? The push for accountability of the Ruto administration has not come to an end. This is the beginning. Beloved Kenyans, if we want to keep our nation, to make it functional, to let it grow and become a benefit for every Kenyan, not for a select few, we've got to lift the accountability bar high. I want to end by saying the court 
has the heaviest responsibility. Ask yourself as a judicial officer, how are you dealing with cases of corruption brought before you? How are you dealing with the cases of accountability brought before you? How are you dealing with public interest litigation when it is brought before you? Why would you ask a protester brought before you to pay bail of 100,000? The same amount you're giving a person accused of corruption and who has already robbed us our money. I salute the court that reduced bail and gave them free bond. After all, these are not criminals. These are people exercising their rights. If a person has actually been caught stealing, we understand harsh bail terms. If they've been caught with criminality, but not trumped up charges merely because they were out on a day of demonstration, including young children. Need I remind us that all power belongs to the people and that you, judicial officer of whatever cadre, you derive your power from the people? Need I remind us that the act of one person can mess up a nation? When you shield a bad leader to remain in power, whether by a messed election petition or by messing an accountability case before you, you can throw the nation into chaos. Every action matters. You must hold the torch of justice so that the weakest get justice alike with the strongest. Let us not be a nation where justice is for sale or is for those in power and not for the people. Stand up for the people. You judicial officer of whatever cadre, stand up for the people. You police officer, stand up for the people everywhere. And we, the people, must force accountability. Accountability is not an issue those in authority elect or choose to obey. Accountability is an issue that has to be forced through pressure. If we embrace the rule of law, if we adhere to our constitutions and the laws made under it, then we will not have a problem of impunity. But if impunity runs even in the institutions of accountability, in the courts, in ESCC, in the police force, in the NTSA, no wonder we are having so many deaths. In the executive, in parliament, then we'll be doomed as a nation. I pray that we wake up and we have this conversation on how to keep the nation accountable. And each state officer, each public officer, each elected or appointed leader, we must keep you accountable. You chief in the village, we need you to be accountable. You administrator, we need you to be accountable. It's individual and collective. We must put every person to account. And we as Kenyans, we must desist from harming each other. Let us together build this nation so that our children and future generations can enjoy a country where prosperity is shared. We truly have a beautiful nation. Let us salvage it by holding up the torch of accountability and killing impunity. Thank you.